Hello and welcome to this review of my Alps SM101. I got this as part of a trade which includes another keyboard that you'll see in a review further down the line. It's an interesting keyboard because it uses Alps buckling springs. Now when you mention buckling springs of course we all immediately think of IBM's design by Richard Hunter Harris and indeed they invented it but a few other manufacturers made them too and this is Alps's interpretation of them. As the badge clearly indicates, this board was made for an RM Nimbus system, which was a kind of British PC sold in the late 80s and early 90s. Alps did actually make keyboards for IBM themselves with these switches in the form of the Sega TerraDrive keyboard, although it's not known if Alps copied this design on their own initiative or whether IBM asked for it for in their keyboards. On the reverse side, there's some writing on it, which identifies that this one was used on a 386 system and it has a date of 1996 on it. But apparently at that time, the computers weren't badged Nimbus anymore. And there's a date code on one of the chips inside that suggests it's actually from the last week of 1989 instead. So maybe they repurposed it from an older computer to work on a 386. The SM101 was Alps' own model, and they sold it to others as well, not just RM Nimbus. And this particular one is slightly yellowed, but in remarkably clean condition, and I'm quite happy with it. I assume it was made by Alps themselves in a former Apple plant in Ireland, or maybe their facility in Milton Keynes. The case looks like a midway between the Model M, especially these ridges here, which are exactly the same as on a Model M, and the Dell Bigfoot, also made by Alps, which has a similar banana shape of case. It's almost exactly the same weight as a Bigfoot as well, a little over 1.4 kilos. And the case is almost the same size, except slightly longer and slightly less deep. Here's what it looks like on the inside. Just like with IBM's design, there is a metal back plate to hold everything together. And it's held to the barrel plate using melted plastic rivets. There's about 55 of them or something. But unlike IBM's, which were small and very thin, very thin indeed, so they broke off very quickly, the ones in this Alps board are much thicker. They're almost like studs, as a matter of fact. And reflecting this, none of them have come off yet, so this seems to be a sturdier design than the ones on the Model M. It's got simple, small flip-out feet on the back as well as some rubber cushions to prevent it from slipping and a five part very secure cable gutter it's got two exits on this side one in the middle and two on this side which is one of the best implementations of this design i've seen so far the cable is thick and coiled and it has a ps2 connector so you can use it with a modern computer without too much hassle i'd say overall it's pretty well made and it feels sturdy and lasting the keycaps are a bit of an exception though. When you say Alps keycaps, most people think of the nice, high quality PBT die sub caps they made, or the thick, rather beautiful ABS double shots that they put on some of their keyboards. But these caps are thin ABS with simple pad printing. And although they look pretty good for pad printed caps and they have a nice font, particularly on these keys here, it's still not up to the standards most people would expect from Alps. The problem with these ABS caps, of course, is that they can yellow with age and the pad printing can wear off over time. Although in fairness, the legends on this one still look pristine. They are still Alps mount though, so if you want to, you can stick different keycaps on it and they should work fine. Interestingly, the keycaps make more noise in one direction than in the other when you rub your fingers across it due to the way that the switches are made. You know, normally switches have a vertical line of symmetry, so it sounds the same both ways, like this. But because the switches in this work horizontally rather than vertically, it sounds quite different. Here, let me demonstrate. Bringing us to the switches, they might be based on IBM's design, but they're quite different, even in construction, as Alps saw to update the design in a few ways. First of all, despite how simple the buckling spring design might seem to be, there are actually very strict manufacturing tolerances involved. If one part is just slightly too short or slightly too long, or if one of the parts is slightly misaligned, it will not work. 
and even tiny variations during production give switches with different feel and sound, and that makes it surprisingly hard to manufacture these switches consistently. Second, they wanted to make a lower profile version of the switch using shorter springs, but with shorter springs it becomes much harder or even impossible to buckle the spring properly. So they designed a switch that uses the same underlying principles, but with a quite different execution. See, in the IBM design, the keycap sits directly on top of the spring, and it uses this little thing here called a mounting bed to pre-angle the spring so that it buckles in the right direction when you press the keycap, which in this case is vertically like so. But in the Alps design, the keycaps sit on an actual slider built into the design, and it buckles horizontally from left to right, not vertically as they rotated the switches around, so the hammer is actually facing in that direction. Moreover, the hammer has a follower arm on it that pushes the spring when you press down a key to make it possible for the shorter spring to buckle properly. This results in a shorter travel, a quite different feeling, and a noticeably different sound. First of all, the feeling is much more tactile than that of IBM buckling springs. See, with IBM's buckling springs, if you press it very deliberately, you can actually push down linearly without suddenly going down after the tactile bump. But this is impossible to do with the Alps design. See, no matter how careful you are, after the tactile bump, you always shoot down a little bit further. The weighting feels different too. It feels like it ramps steeper, but ends lower. So confusingly, it feels both lighter and heavier at the same time, as far as I can tell. This is not a key for that encourages light typing though, because if you type lightly, you're going to find that some of the keys won't press properly. So this really encourages people just to hammer the keys. The feeling is pretty decent, but it's a bit on the heavy side for me. And personally, I prefer the IBM version as it's a bit more balanced, shall we say. The sound is quite different too. The Model M is known to have a metallic sound as the spring buckles, but in truth it's more of a plastic thock sound than a metal sound. Here, I'll give you a quick demo. You can hear a bit of metal in there, but it's mostly just a, a thock sound. The Model F sounds much more metallic, with the spring producing a curious singing sound that rises up in pitch, almost as if it's a question, like doink, 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 and it's much more obviously metallic than the Model M. The Alps buckling springs don't sound anything like either. It's much more crisp and metallic than the Model M, and it doesn't have the singing sound of the F. And overlaying that sound is something too high pitched to pick up on any of my microphones, so I can't demonstrate it to you, but it's very noticeable. And it sounds like you're ringing a tiny bell every time you press a key, like ding, 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 except very high pitched. It's also slightly less loud than the IBM's. In truth, it's quite a charming sound, but overall, I still prefer the Model M, and especially the Model F. In summary, this board is a really nice curiosity, and although I think IBM's are better, I'm still very happy with this board. If you like the Model M but think it's not tactile enough, you might want to check out these switches someday. They might be just what you're looking for. Anyway, that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.